Welcome to another Sabbath day scene time. I'm going to start you out with a little story from our Come Follow Me lesson. So we are talking about Nephi. Remember Nephi is Helaman's son. Last week I told you guys that Helaman had named his sons Nephi and Lehi so that they would remember, right? Remember the people that came before them so that they would be great just like those men and do good things just like those men. Well, so this is Nephi. This is Helaman's son. And he is sad. And he goes out to his garden tower. Don't you wish you had a tower in your garden? I want to build a garden. After reading that, I want to build a garden tower. He goes out to his garden tower and he's praying and he's so sad. And he says, I wish I could live in the days of Nephi. You know, the first Nephi that he's named after. And that people would listen and that they would love the Lord. Because right now people are so wicked and they're not listening. And they're not doing the things they're supposed to. And he's so sad. And as people are walking to the market, they, he's near a highway. And as they're walking by, they're wondering, what is this guy talking about? And so a big crowd gathers. And when Nephi is done praying, he's, he says, what are you guys doing here? And he starts preaching to them and prophesying to them. A lot of people don't believe him. Some people do believe him. And he says, so that you will know that I'm a man of God and that I receive revelation, I'm going to tell you something that happened. I'm going to tell you, if you go to the judgment seat right now, you'll find out that your chief judge has been murdered. And guess what? That's all I'm telling you. That's all I'm telling you on that story. What do you think happens when they go to see if the chief judge is murdered? You're going to have to ask your parents. They're going to tell you the whole story. But I love that. I love that Nephi said, I received revelation. I know these things. The Lord told me these things. And that's something that he talks about later on as well. Well, we have someone on the earth today who receives revelation from the Lord. Can you guys guess who it is? President Nelson. Look at these pictures of him. So know what we're going to do today? We are going to get to know our prophet just a little bit better. Can you guys do that with me? So I'm going to take down a picture and each picture I'll bring it closer to the screen so you can see what the picture is. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him and we're going to sing a song. So the very first one I'm going to get down for you is this one right here. Look at this picture. Can you see that? That is our prophet. When he was younger, do you see what he's holding? Pretty cool, huh? It's an artificial heart. Did you know that President Nelson was a renowned heart surgeon? He helped um, in the development of the heart-lung machine. He was on the research team that's, uh, and supported the first open heart surgery operation on a human being. It's pretty big. He also performed a heart operation on President Spencer W. Kimball, not very long before he became the prophet. And the year before he was called to be an apostle, do you want to know how many heart operations he performed? Guess. Guess how many open heart operations? Almost as many as there are days in the year. 360 operations the year before he became an apostle. Can you believe it? Okay, I'm going to give you an awesome little quote from General Conference, March 2018. Gary E. Stevenson said this of the prophet. He said, interestingly, as President Nelson's call to the 12 ended a professional medical career of strengthening and repairing hearts, it began a ministry as an apostle devoted to strengthening and repairing hearts of countless tens of thousands around the world. Right? Our prophet touches my heart on a daily basis. We get to listen to him at conference, and I'm able to feel the spirit because of him, because he's able to speak and tell us the things the Lord wants us to hear. So we are actually going to sing because... He was a heart surgeon. We're going to sing Love One Another. Okay? You remember, we know the ASL for this. As I have loved you, love one another. This new commandment, love one another. You guys got it? Okay. Get out your eyes, okay?
those words? By this shall men know that ye are my disciples. Do we know that President Nelson is a prophet? We do, right? Because he shows love to everyone. He is the perfect example of that. Okay, let's get to our next one. Let's choose this one. I love this one. Look at this picture. That is our prophet playing the piano. He's in his 90s and he can play the piano. Did you know he can also play the organ? Did you know he has perfect pitch? I do not have perfect pitch. So if you started singing a song, like I can sing a song to you all day long, but I'll probably sing it in the wrong key. He has perfect pitch. He would know if you were singing it in the wrong key. Isn't that crazy? Um, I feel like music is one way that we can share the gospel with others. Do you guys think that you can through music? Do you think that we're sharing the gospel by learning these primary songs? And you guys can sing them. You can sing them to your families. That's bearing your testimony. You can sing them to your friends. So we are going to sing a song together to help share the gospel. Do you remember when I talked to you about how President Nelson asked us to join the Lord's Youth Battalion? He was talking to the young men and young women. But since then, some of our primary kids have become young men and young women. And soon you guys are going to be young men and young women. So this is what he said, remember? He said during a special worldwide youth devotional, June 2018, that as they enlist in the Lord's Battalion and help gather Israel, youth of the church have the opportunity to be part of something big, something grand, something majestic. Don't you want to be part of the Lord's Youth Battalion? That makes me so excited. We are going to sing, we'll bring the world his truth, right? This is one we just recently learned. We have been born as Nephi of old. I've got the words for you. Nelson does that for us, right? When he speaks to us, he brings us truth and he wants us to do the same thing for other people, to share the gospel, to share the love of Jesus Christ with other people. Okay, let's get to know a little more about him. Let's do, oh, I love this one. Okay, you see this picture? This is a very special picture. This is a picture of part of a general conference address that uh, Elder Worthlin was giving. I remember I was first, I had just been married only for two, almost two years and I was watching conference and Elder Worthlin got up to talk. And I remember that as he went throughout his talk, suddenly he started getting a little shaky and his body was shaking. And I remember being really concerned. I want to read to you something that Elder Worthlin's son said about the experience. It said, let's see here. Elder Worthland's son, Joseph Worthland Jr., remembers leaving his seat in the conference center to help his father, only to see President Nelson quickly move to his father's side of the pulpit. President Nelson put a hand on the apostle's shoulder and grabbed his belt with the other. Because of the lifting and stabilizing of effort of President Nelson, Elder Worthland was able to complete his address. Isn't that wonderful? I remember watching that. I remember watching. At the time, he wasn't the prophet, but he stood up and he helped support his brother in the church. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to help lift and support each other. And our prophet is the perfect example of that. And I love it because we do get to listen to them every conference. Every, twice a year we get to listen to them. And conference is coming up soon, right? The scriptures say that whether by mine own voice or the voice of my servants, it is the same. So whether we're hearing from the Lord directly or we're he hearing it from some of his apostles and prophets, it's just like the Lord is speaking to us. So we are going to sing the song, Hear Him. Remember, we learned this a little bit earlier, um, probably in the spring. 
I've got all the words for you because we did all four verses. So we're going to do all four verses, but I have the words for you, okay? Jesus entered Jordan's waters. This is my beloved son. Okay. Jesus entered Jordan's waters when his work had just begun. to remember that last note we go hear him so we can right we can hear the lord through listening to our prophet okay we're getting closer to the end oh my goodness do you love how i surrounded all of his pictures with a heart because he was a heart surgeon but also because he's able to touch our hearts okay this one right here I love this picture. He shared this during a conference. Isn't this the cutest picture of our prophet ever? He is so adorable. And he makes me so happy. He has so much energy. Can you even believe it? He is, let me tell you a couple things about him too. He's an incredible downhill skier. He enjoys gardening and mowing the lawn and shoveling the snow so there's none on the sidewalks. When he's home, he will get garbage neighbor's garbage from the curb and bring it up um right here with boundless energy some say he has never taken a sick day president nelson descends the circular stairway after meeting in the upper room of the salt lake temple with other church leaders every thursday not right now because the salt lake temple is under construction right but this is from before president oak said i always try to keep up with him and i can't do it i grab hold of the banister to balance and i skip along as i can Elder Holland said President Nelson bound stairs two at a time. Do you want to know how old he is? How old do you think our prophet is? He is 95 years old. Can you believe it? And he has all that energy. In fall 2018, so this wasn't very long ago. It was two years ago. He said, if you think the church has been fully restored, you're just seeing the beginning. There is much more to come. Wait till next year. And then the next year. Eat your vitamin pills, get your rest. It's going to be exciting. When he said, wait till next year, that'd be 2019. And the next year, that's 2020. He said, eat your pills, get your rest. It's going to be exciting. I don't know if he knew everything that was going to happen this year. He probably did. But man, we need our rest. We need our vitamins. It sure is exciting right now, right? It's very different. But if we can listen to him and listen to Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ, we're going to be okay. We're going to make it through, right? Okay. One of the main things that President Nelson has asked us to do is one of the first things he talked to us about when he became the prophet. In general conference address in October 2018, he said, what's in a name? Or in this case, a nickname. When it comes to nicknames of the church, such as LDS Church, the Mormon Church, or the Church of Latter-day Saints, the most important thing in those names is the absence of the Savior's name. 
To remove the Lord's name from the Lord's church is a major victory for Satan. When we discard the Savior's name, we are subtly disregarding what Jesus Christ did for us, even his atonement. So what's in a name? When it comes to the name of the Lord's church, the answer is everything. Jesus Christ directed us to call the church by his name because it is his church filled with his power. So we're going to sing, I belong to the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You guys know this song so well. I belong to the church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. I know who I am, I know God's plan, I'll follow Him in faith. I believe in the Savior Jesus Christ, I'll honor His name, I'll do what is right. Awesome. We only have one picture left. I don't want to stop talking about our prophet. He's so much fun. You know how I just told you how old he was? How old did I say? 95, right? Guess what? He's only 95 for one more week. What? Next week. It's actually a week and a half away, but next week. So after next Sunday, he's having his birthday on September 9th, and he is going to be 90 six years old. So can you guys do me a favor? Can we sing one of our birthday songs to President Nelson? Let's do it, okay? I love this picture of him. He is such a happy person. He's always so optimistic. So I love this picture. This is the picture that I keep of him always. Look at that smile. You can tell he loves the Lord and he loves serving. And he loves this church so much. So we are going to sing happy, happy birthday, prophet dear. Happy days will come to you all year. If I had one wish, then it would be a happy, happy birthday to you from me. Happy, happy birthday, prophet dear. Happy, happy birthday, prophet dear. Happy days will come to you all year. If I had one wish, then it would be a happy, happy birthday to you from me. Thank you so much for helping me wish him a happy birthday. So through the next week and a half, I want you to take the time with your families. Get to know the prophet. Get to know about his life. Get to know about the things that he's taught us. Because like I said earlier, whether by the voice of the Lord or the voice of his servants, even our prophet, it's the same. It's the things that Heavenly Father wants us to know for our time today. I'm so excited we got to learn a little bit more about him. Remind your parents to tell you the story about Nephi and how he received revelation to show people that he was the prophet on the earth that day. Thank you for joining me for seeing time. I will see you next week.